Good afternoon. My name is Joe Whitcomb. I am the founder and president of Whitcomb Selinski, a veteran owned, operated, and centric law firm in Denver, Colorado. Uh, today I'm going to take about 15 minutes uh, and talk to you about the sort of soup to nuts or the beginning stages of government contracting. We, have a, we represent a lot of veteran business owners across the country. Uh, in, in the space of government contracting, and we regularly get the question, either by email or by phone call, hey, I'm interested in government contracting, how do I get started? So today's video is gonna cover, gonna cover about 10 topics on exactly that, on how do you get started. Uh, the first question, uh, the first topic we're gonna cover is why do business with the federal government in the first place? Um, it's intuitive uh, in most businesses that your most business owners will tell you well we're a we're a b2b outfit or we're a b2c outfit we we've our focus is on other businesses or our focus is on consumers uh what we do is with clients who actually are in the b2g business so doing business with the federal government and why do that well uh, most folks understand intuitively that the government buys a lot of things uh, they are the largest consumer of goods and services in the United States with about a $1.5 trillion budget. Uh, we, of course, we can argue about whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it is uh, what it is. That the government spends about $1.5 trillion a year on goods and services um, purchased from contractors. So that's one reason to be in the government contracting space because uh, there's a lot of money there. Um, also, usually there's contracts involved, which give business owners a little bit of a little bit of runway. If you want a five-year contract, it's of course it's not guaranteed. Any you know, things can happen, but in most instances, a five-year contracts last five years, and many government contractors renew uh, or win renewal contracts, and so it can give a con it can give a, a business um, a reliable revenue stream. I typically advise my clients uh, to diversify and do business with both co consumers. Uh, commercial business and with the government, and not to put all their eggs in one basket, but those are business decisions that are made by uh, the owners of the business. So that answers the question, why do business with the federal government in the first place? You've made the decision to do business with the federal government, now your question is, where do I start? How do I get started? Well, the very, the, the fundamentals, the very first thing you've got to do, assuming of course you've already filed your articles of organization or uh, corporate uh, documents on the Secretary of State's website, the, the next thing you've got to do is you've got to get a DUNS number. Now, this uh, video blog will be accompanied by a PowerPoint presentation. In that PowerPoint presentation, there are several websites. One of those is Dun & Bradstreet's uh, iUpdate. You can Google it. You can follow the link that's in, my, in the PowerPoint presentation. And that'll take you out to a website where you just begin populating it with information, the names of the owners, the addresses, and so forth. And eventually what you'll get is a, a number, typically referred to as a DUNS, D-U-N-S number, DUNS number. That DUNS number becomes the number that the federal government will identify your company by. Doesn't use your EIN, um, sometimes it'll need your EIN to pay you, but it doesn't use your EIN, it'll use your DUNS number, which is free, you should not be paying anybody for a DUNS number. Uh, you can get it through that website. So once you have, and, and it's important when you go to get your DUNS number that the information on the Secretary of State's website is accurate uh, because that is the information that DUNS will use um, for your address and other things. That's where they'll populate or confirm against the Secretary of State's website. So make sure that's up to date. So once you have your DUNS number, what's next? The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go out to the Census Bureau for and, and find out, not acquire, but find out what your NAICS code is. Now, NAICS stands for the North American Industry Classification System. You may not know this, but if you filed federal income taxes, there's a NAICS code on your federal income taxes. So for an office of attorneys, that number is 54 triple one zero that's an office of attorneys that's how we are identified by the irs uh, as to what we do if we were a general contractor we'd have a different NAICS code if we were an electrical company 
uh, or a company of electricians, we'd have a, another NAICS code. Uh, that's a six digit code that just tells the government what it is generally that you do. Now, it doesn't tell the government that I practice government contracts law or patent law or intellectual property law, or trademark law. It just tells the government that, that my law firm practices law, period. It doesn't tell them more than that. But you'll need to know what your NAICS code is. Because from there you'll learn whether or not your company is small. Now the odds are good if you're reviewing this video and you're a new business or a fairly new business, you are small. But the entity, the agency that determines uh, how big is small is the Small Business Administration. Uh, and they create a table every so often, usually at least once a year. Um, and in that table, which again in our, in our PowerPoint presentation, you can find the website and the, for the table and you can look up by NAICS code, previous slide, um, as to whether or not you're small. So if you're an office of attorneys, again, 54110, you can go down on that table and you can see that's a size standard for that. I believe the last time I checked was $11.5 million. A year in average three year receipt. So if you had a big year of 12 million or 13 million one year, followed by a $5 million year, your average would still be below 11.5 million. If you were a law firm, you'd still be considered small. Uh, not all entities, uh, if, you're, if you're a general contractor, the number I think is 37.5 million. If you're a manufacturer, it's based on a number of employees. It could be 500 or 1,000 employees, depending on what you manufacture. But that size standard that you find in our, will tell you whether or not you are small. And you must be small in order to qualify small in quotes in order to qualify for any other socioeconomic programs, be they Hub Zone, AA, uh, there's a lot of them and there'll be video content to follow, so don't worry about not getting it today. There'll be video content to follow on what all that is. So the next, you, you're determining there whether or not you are small and therefore eligible to compete for contracts that are set aside for small businesses. The next website that you will need to visit is a website uh, referred to as SAM.gov. It's the System for Award Management, SAM.gov. Uh, and again, the website and what it looks like is in the PowerPoint presentation. And that is where you will register your company to do business with the federal government. It is a one-stop shop for doing business with the federal government. You must be registered here in order to do business with the federal government if you are a U.S.-based company. Um, and that website, it will take the average person about 45 minutes to an hour to complete that. Um, you'll need to have your EIN, you'll need to have your DUNS number already. Um, all, of that, all of that information will populate from your DUNS registration, your DUNS registration from iUpdate. Uh, and that's where that will come. But then you will fill out the rest of your information. So typically when you fill out your DUNS, you'd have to wait about 48 hours then you'll get an email that tells you your DUNS number is issued. And then about 24 hours after that, you'll be able to go out to um, SAM and start your registry there. Um, you, you, again, it'll take you about an hour, maybe a little less to complete that. You don't need to pay an entity to do that. It is a service our law firm uh, paralegals do for our existing clients. Um, they're usually pretty fast or in and out in no time. Uh, but you don't need to pay anybody to do that. Um, the... SAM registration needs to be completed. You'll get issued a CAGE code, uh, and then you'll get a notification that tells you that you're now eligible to compete for federal contracts generally. It's also in that SAM.gov registry that you'll notice the, the government, you'll let the government, you'll check boxes as to your socioeconomic indicators. You'll let them know if you're a veteran-owned business. You'll let them know if you're a woman-owned business. And you must be owned and controlled at least 51% owned by whatever qualifying individuals. So if it's a woman-owned business, a woman must own 51% of the company and must control the company. If it's a veteran-owned business, a veteran must own 51% of the entity and control the entity um, and be there to manage the day-to-day. -day. So that's your SAM registration. The next thing you will do is you will go out to FBO, which stands for FedBizOps.gov. That website right now is, it's, it's an old website, but it's recently gone undergone a massive facelift. Doesn't look like anything like it has historically. 
we will be producing content, video content on how to get through that website, the new version of that website uh, soon. But for now, uh, you can register on FBO after you registered on SAM, and that will enable you to be notified of solicitations that are in your wheelhouse. So if you're in uh, the construction business, you'll, you can look for contracts in the construction business. If you want to do business in Georgia, you can look for construction contracts that are in Georgia. You can narrow all of those things down and get notifications for business that you want to bid on because you will have to eventually write proposals and bid on those jobs. Um, and again, we'll, we'll have follow-up content on what it takes to ultimately get qualified to be able to compete for that business, what past performance and those other things look like. But for today, you want to be registered on FBO.gov. The last thing that you'll want to look into uh, is if you're, if you're interested in competing for contracts that are set aside for veteran-owned businesses, and a lot of our audience are veteran-owned businesses, so if you're competing for veteran-owned businesses, you'll want to go out to the Center for Verification and Eligibility, or which is a vetbiz.va.gov. And again, there's a page in the PowerPoint presentation to show you what that looks like and how to get there. You'll need to register for that website again. And this is probably the longest process that you'll be involved with if you're gonna get verified here. Now the question you ask yourself, or a business owner needs to ask is, do I, does my company want to do business with the VA? If the answer to that question is no, then do not spend the time, energy, or money uh, doing this. If you want to compete for contracts that are issued by the VA, you, you sell a good or service you believe the VA buys. Um, and are, again, we'll show you ways in the future on how to research that and what, how to find out what the VA is purchasing. But if you want to do business with the VA, then getting that CV verification uh, can be can be useful. It will typically take you anywhere from 45 to 60 days on the inside, and I've seen it take as long as 90, uh, where there's more complicating factors, multiple members in an LLC, uh, a business owner who owns multiple entities or has multiple locations, that can take that can make things take longer. That is a service that our firm provides. Uh, again, we use paralegals to do the lion's share of that work. However, if there are legal documents that need to be completed, operating agreements, bylaws. We know how to draft those documents in ways that will be um, acceptable to the Veterans Administration uh, for the purposes of verification. Um, so that's the last stage you would need as far as the most elementary stages of getting through uh, in, into government contracting. Uh, if you want to learn more information, you can look at our existing um, blog post. Of course, there's lots of other information. There's uh, there in every state has what's called a PTAC, capital P T A C. PTACs are state funded organizations. Won't cost you anything. They're great for education. Um, they they you can subscribe to news releases to let you know what uh, competitions uh, for contracts are going on around the country uh, in your wheelhouse. It's a useful service. There's um, about 450 blog posts on our website, many of which have to do with government contracting. You can look there. And of course, there's other resources around the country. But should you have other questions or concerns, um, please use the contact information on our website. We have forms that are on our website that you can complete. Uh, we have a chat box you can use. So we, we've made ourselves available in as many ways as we can. I thank you very much for tuning in to today's Vet Biz Law uh, video blog. Uh, there will be others um, to come in the near future. Again, I thank you for your time and attention today. Oh, if you do, again, if you do like what the content that you've received today, uh, please do us the favor of subscribing to the content. That way, um, when, we, when new content comes up, you'll automatically be notified. All right, thank you again. My name is Joe Whitcomb with Whitcomb Selensky, and I appreciate uh, your time and attention today. Mm -hmm.